Good morning, everyone, and welcome back to another edition of the show. It is episode 315. It's June 21st, 2022, and I believe that's the summer solstice. Um, we're joined with by Kyle Klingman from Summer Solstice, Iowa. Kyle, uh, is am I right? Is today the summer solstice? And what is it? It is long, longest day of the year. Because the longest sun in the of the sun, everything, and yeah, it's it's kind of the. The best and the worst, because now it's going to start getting two minutes darker every day, but we still have a lot of summer left. Yeah, so I'm going to enjoy it. It'll be like 9 o'clock before it gets dark tonight. Um, yeah. Stoked for that, and stoked for our guest today. She's joining us from um, Colorado. She's a three-time world medalist, two-time finalist. Um, Sarah Hildebrand. Sarah, how are you? Hello. I'm good. Thank you. Awesome. Thanks for joining us. Um, and you were just telling me that there was a camp going on and practice is getting started, but you're, you're doing this. And I was like, wait, what? I thought... But it turns out it's, it's like a junior or a U20 or U17 camp or something like that. Um, but what is your, your typical schedule like training wise as we're, I don't think you like have a competition coming up right away, right? You just finished one, but what's like, we'll go with this week, right? What's a general day or, or what's this week like? Yeah, so this week we're, I'm like ramping back into a heavy training phase, getting ready for the ranking tournament in Tunisia. So um, this week I'm reintroducing two a days. For the last bit, I've just been doing one mat a day. Um, but I want to kind of train heavy at least for the next week, um, put in a couple extra mat practices. So I'll put on two mats on Tuesdays and Thursdays, um, along with lifting Monday. Tuesday, Thursday, Friday, and then I also have a mat practice Mondays and Monday, Friday, and then Wednesday, Saturday is kind of like whatever you feel like doing. Maybe it's on the mat, maybe it's you know on a just a run or something like that. So uh, lots of wrestling, which is how I like it. So yeah, I love that at the senior level, right? It's like you're you're, you're professional athletes, right? So really, you can set your own schedule and the way you want to do it. Is it like there's practices going on and you, you jump in whichever ones you want? Are you grabbing a girl or a group of ladies um, and a coach and no coach, coach half the time? I'm just kind of curious. I know what it's like when, when camp's going on, but when, a camp's, yeah. when it's not camp and you're just doing your own thing. Yeah. Um, you know, we have a set schedule and it, it's just different for everyone because especially at this point in the year, there's so many tours going on and you have half the team going to this tournament and half the team going here people are in and out all summer so um we have a set amount of practices but with that said you know we're adults and i think you know the coaches recognize like we can vouch for ourselves like hey i need to step out from this practice it's totally not serving me right now but you know we're all here with the same mindset of you know wanting to win world and olympic gold medals so uh we know what that takes and nobody's out here cutting corners you know yeah do you do many or some or, or a lot of, I don't know, mat practices with just without a coach? It's just you and whoever sparring or live or technique or? Um, I feel like Wednesdays and Saturdays are definitely those days where it's just like, hey, come in, feel good. If you want to get on the mat, get on the mat. And they're definitely like, you know, less under the coach's eye and more kind of your whatever you want. And that's always kind of my favorite thing about coming back from a tournament is, you know, coaches aren't just watching as, like as much so it's kind of just very free open no coaches and it it's so funny like the wrestling that takes place when you're just like you know not being watched or critiqued or anything like that it's just like free and open and probably pretty ugly but i i love that those are some of my favorite practices heck yeah um and i guess we'll back up right you, you know you back the two days but you were doing i'm sure one a day is leading into final x is that is i i guess you're tapering and having shorter practices and, and less just like yeah. you went towards the nationals or state high schools or whatever. Yeah, definitely a little bit of tapering in there, you know, short practices, but really intense. So, you know, you're not exhausting yourself, but you're still getting your heart rate up. You're still getting a really good sweat. Um, it's, it's a hard time for me because I like to just like grind and wrestle and go way too much. And so that kind of pulling back and especially cause you're like way excited. Like you're getting so close to the competition. Yeah. So your energy like through the roof. Um, so kind of holding myself back in those weeks is hard. So I'm excited about the coming training weeks ahead. I, you like, 
then when you're like, you're going to hold me back. And I get so excited. What I think about is like, I don't know if you've ever seen in Alaska, there's these dogs that they run with the sleds, but when they're not yeah. running the sleds, they're chained up. Um, <laughs> And they'll run circles around the chains because, and then there's the dirt is all like totally worn down, right? Where, because they are so excited and they just want to go. And I feel like what you're describing is that dog chained up and just like, let, yes. let me, let me go. Let me go. A hundred percent. I feel like a caged animal. I'm like, let's go, let's go. I end up just like dancing. Like I'll just like dance the whole week of a competition because I'm like, have so much energy and I'll just be in my room or my hotel room. And I'm just like, I need to move or something, you know, and it's like, dude, you need to just sit your butt down. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's fantastic. Okay. Uh, so now we're in New York City. You're dancing your way to New York City. Um, <laughs> Literally. <laughs> I don't think, I don't, you didn't wrestle in the, the event there that beat the streets uh, a couple years prior, did you? I did not. I was supposed to. I had to pull out because of injuries. So this was my first time. Well, I don't know what was the experience like, and is is just going to New York City for me, right? Doing what I it's going to New York to do anything is different, right? Getting around and and everything. So how how different is that experience for you, and do you like it? You know, I was nervous about it being in New York because of there's just so many variables and so much going on, and you know, the day of competition or the days leading into competition, you want it very routine and structured. <laughs> At least I do as yeah, much yeah. as you can, you know, controlling as much as you can. And New York city is not, <laughs> it's not really a place where you're like, yeah, I have all the control. <laughs> <laughs> so I was a little stressed about that, but, um, you know, I'm working on not being so rigid and this was a really great test for that. And just giving myself a lot of time to get places and, and just feeding off the energy and making it positive instead of making it draining, which it can be if you're going in with the wrong perspective. Um, so I think, you know, with that in mind, I really fed off of the energy of New York City and, and of the event itself. It was an absolute blast. Cool. What would you think about the venue? Um, and I think the, you had to like go in the back, climb up a couple stairs or uh, escalators and around the corner. So to many get... escalators. <laughs> <laughs> so many. <laughs> yeah, the venue was freaking awesome, though. I had it was so cool. And just walking down the, for the last match with, you know, through the fans and stuff like that. That was that was so fun. It was seriously an event. Like, I love this. This is how wrestling needs to be. Yeah, yeah, it was. Uh, well, and I'm sure it went, it went really well. And I'd like to, I like—I kind of want to go through these matches and watch them with you, and just kind of get your take. So um, maybe Tyler, our producer, can cue this one up. But do you feel? I mean, did you did you feel as good as you looked? And I mean, coming into the match, right? I, I, honestly, you you look you, you look you were lights out. There's no doubt about it. Thank uh, you. Yeah. yeah. No, I felt really great. I felt light. I was having a lot of fun, um, which has been a huge a huge thing for me. I wasn't feeling very results oriented, which is also another, you know, important thing for me right now is just be very present and just enjoy what wrestling is, you know, adding to me in my life. And, uh, the results aren't going to make or break anything of who I am. And I, I really felt like that I was embodying that. And I just, you know, enjoy wrestling. I felt like it looked like I was having fun out there, and I was. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I, I was, I'm sure it was a blast. Let's let's uh, play this clip here, and uh, first match against Alyssa Lampy. Um, I'm sure you're you're very familiar with her, right? Yeah, oh, she, we've been. You know, she trained out here for a while when I first moved out here, and uh, you know, we've both been on the scene for a while now. So, different weight classes for a long time. <laughs> yep, but. Certainly and I think Christian even said it. He's like, watch for the for the sweep single. Boom. Like and I think he hit about three seconds after he said that. And then we <laughs> talked about the lace. He's like, watch out for the lace. Yes, I knew she'd be defending the lace. It's kind of been become a point for me. Uh oh, man. you know, people I know are gonna be working defending that lace. Like, I know it's going to be a heavy part of the preparation when they're coming and wrestling me. Yeah. But to me, I totally spun it like, so you agree. You think you're going to get taken down. <laughs> 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 that was kind of my viewpoint there. No, that's great. Yeah, I love it. And, and uh, man, it's just, it's, it's developed and gotten tighter and, and uh, a lot tougher. 
that that lace. Did it feel any? You know, you're on a stage. There's only a crowd on one side. Did any of that? Yeah. Feel, it's a big, big. It's a big stage. It is. You know, I I thought that's actually one of the things that crossed my mind before the competition was like, how weird the crowd's only going to be on one side. Uh -huh. And then I was like, oh, how weird we're going to have a crowd. <laughs> <laughs> so <laughs> it was a lot of you know we haven't had a crowd in a while. So yeah. uh, But once I'm out there, it's crazy how you really just are not aware of any of that. Um, legs and body, legs and arms and feet and head. <laughs> right? yeah. Those are the things you're aware of, a body. Right, right. Those are the things you're more clued into versus the crowd. Yeah. Man, um, just steamrolled. Let's go, leg laces. Yeah. That's always a good one when I can get there. So what'd you do between matches? I uh, hung out with my sister. Um, you know, we were just, my sister was in my corner, which is so nice. She really calms me down. Um, I feel in a good spot. Now I've done a lot of two out of three series that I have a hold on that in between time. And it can be a tricky spot. Uh, and it can be a really tricky spot when you just won match one and you're like, I'm one match away. Like, oh my gosh, I'm so close. So like, you know, again, not, reaching too far in the future and getting obsessed with that end result. Just like, here I am in the moment, dancing with my sister, hanging out. I, you know, I think at Olympic trials, we did trivia. I think, at, you know, here we were just doing facts of the day or something like that. So just like, you know, fun, lighthearted things, not wrestling related, uh, just laughing our butts off really. <laughs> yeah. Did you stay at the, like, you know, being new, did you stay at the arena? Did you get the, did you go back to your hotel? But I, I getting anywhere is like, half hour minimum if it's like right across half the hour street no we i i was unsure at first what i was gonna do i was definitely thinking i was gonna stay at the venue but um we i gave myself an hour to get to the venue from new york athletic club which is less than two miles yeah and it took us the whole hour so yeah. after that i was like no we're not leaving <laughs> we are not leaving this venue so no we stayed there and uh just hang out on the mats and you know, just chilled like wrestlers do on the mat. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I mean, if I know it's like I'm sleeping on her back or they got their legs up on me or that's <laughs> yeah, just, exactly. That's wrestlers. That's wrestlers. All right. So uh, we played trivia. We're ready for match two. Let's let this one roll. And you can just yeah. tell us any thoughts or anything you're thinking. Did you see the confetti? I can see it right there. Did you notice any of the confetti? Yes, I was going to bring that up. I noticed the confetti coming out and I was like, oh, I'm honored <laughs> and then i got excited that we were gonna do like a confetti drop afterwards <laughs> and then i was like super excited about that and it's like those moments when you're like man these are the thoughts that i'm thinking right before my match and then you're like holy cow like you're aware you're thinking things that you probably need to like refocus uh-huh i love that little throw by but it was just cracking me up i'm like wow here i am Two confetti. seconds before my match starts, I'm thinking about confetti drops and how fun that would be. <laughs> <laughs> I guess if you're going to keep it loose. Exactly. I'm like, okay, Sarah, bring it back. Bring it back. Okay, wrestle, wrestle, uh, wrestle. Exactly. Well, I didn't take you long to refocus. Yeah, no, we're in it. <laughs> Once we shake hands, it's go time. Yeah, it's, it's the crazy. best fun. But it, it, that could, and I don't even know if it did. I don't think it dropped at the end of the night. Yeah, there was never any confetti. And I'm like, do they just have preloaded confetti? I and thought then that maybe it was stuck from something because it, it would trickle down throughout the night uh, one at was, a time. Yeah. I was so excited about the confetti. So, <laughs> and then I'm like, I wonder how much is going to be on the Like, what if it starts falling during my match? I'm like, that would be the coolest thing ever. <laughs> <sighs> As you're trying to finish a single leg, you're like, oh, oh, where's that confetti? Yeah, like looking up. No, definitely love the confetti. Okay. Here is my beef. Do you guys think that this was 10 points or eight points? <laughs> okay, four, <laughs> right? Four, six, eight. I think that was defensible. That one, man. Come on, that's <laughs> <laughs> Okay, they got it. 
okay, this is bad of me. I should have kept wrestling here. I was, <laughs> I definitely looked up at the scoreboard and saw 10 and I'm like, let's go. I could see where they could say it's, you know, it wasn't defensible, but I, it's like, <laughs> it's dead, I y'all. Hate when I this, like this. this is so the worst. I hate when I get like that, like my, I don't know. But that's okay. You know, this is a good spot for me. And actually, here's what's going through my head. Uh, like, 8-0 is a tricky spot to be because, again, you're like, oh, my gosh, just one more, just one more. And I've been working on this a lot. And we actually talked about this in the break. And I'm like, I want to do better about, you know, composing myself after 8-0. That was and throwby. my sister was like, yeah, thanks. My sister's like, yeah, we need, you know, don't just come up and immediately shoot. And of course, what do I do? It's eight zero. I go in there and just dive in on a shot. So definitely something to work on. There we but go. But then, signature. but then <laughs> you you chilled out and you hand fought and you wrestled and, and you hit that th- you hit that little throw by, which was awesome. So yeah, no, true. There's still some victory. <laughs> oh, that's so sweet. Yeah, so it's good. I but, but that was definitely. You know, I feel like wrestling always presents its areas to work on. And that 8-0 lead for me is something that I'm working on and the mental gaming that comes with it. Uh, so clearly, <laughs> I need to work on not diving in the shot. But yeah, we we corrected it and, and got the W. <laughs> Made the adjustment for sure. Back to you were like, I just felt free and I wasn't results oriented. And, and you hear that a lot. But that's like, it's easy to say and hard to do because everybody wants to win and there is a, a pressure from yourself or who uh, external, whether or not it's real. Um, how did you get to the point? Well, one, how did you get this point? I guess two, had, had you wrestled the other way before? And if so, how'd you get to the point where you're not so results oriented and it's just probably freer? Yeah. You know, it's like, you're exactly right. Like we hear that from day dot when you're into a sport into anything, it's like, you know, you are not, it's not about winning and have fun. It's all like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, whatever. I just want to win. <laughs> yeah. I'm totally sh- dude, but I really want to win. Like, what? Right. You know what I mean? Um, and it really, a lot of my career, it, it's been come in stages where I'm like, yes, yes, I I agree with this sentiment, but it's so hard to actually live out. Like you would say it, and then when it got time to com- compete, you're like, but I want to win. You know, like, <laughs> um. You know, I would say going into the Olympics, I really started to understand that more. I I won't say I was like living it because, you know, I lost at the Olympics and it was like earth shattering. Like I was like distraught. Like the <laughs> I was so upset at the Olympics. And so I could tell I wasn't embodying that. And then um, or through world championships. But afterwards, I had been in a really bad slump towards wrestling and life in general. And I was just going on this walk and it like hit me like very distinctly. And I was like, Oh my gosh, I don't need to win. Like (laughs) it like finally clicked in my mind. And this is some, one of those things that's like, you can hear it your whole, whole life, but it really, really has to come from yourself and your own understanding of that. And it's not even something you can teach somebody or I feel like adequately explain like, for me, it just finally hit me that I was like, I don't need that gold medal. I don't need it. Like, and it was like so freeing, like an instant shift in my wrestling and my training. Um, and I felt it when I've been competing. I was nervous that when I would go to compete, that I was gonna, you know, immediately back. switch back. Right, especially in like a high stakes competition like Final X. Uh, you know, but I work with a lot of sports psychologists, and and we've been working through this and speaking about it and. Um, it was really my priority to kind of keep that, that mindset, the most important thing and not being so results oriented. And I was happy that it it went off like that at final X and I'm hopeful and still working for that. You know, obviously as we go into worlds, you talk about that walk you went on and, and I'm hoping not prime, but you know, you're like, I was having a, in a slump and kind of in life in general, right? And people, everybody goes to these kind of things. But then you had that, re- you know, and you had that realization of like, I don't need this. Did that like help, one, your your mentality towards wrestling, but also like whatever kind of funk you were in? Oh, for sure. And I, you know, I know that about my, you know, like you said, everyone goes through this. I, I feel like I'm introspective enough right now uh, with my life and wrestling to understand that it's going to be very up and down and 
you you throw in the adrenaline rushes of competing at the Olympics World Championships. That's, you know, incredibly uh, emotional. Yeah. So I understood that. Um, but it, for sure, I had that moment and it really freed me um, a lot in life too. And it, it just helped me see wrestling so differently. It helped me see that I don't have to be miserable to be successful. I don't have to wait to live my life until my wrestling career is over. But I just started seeing wrestling and my life come together and, and understanding that wrestling is only an addition to me. And I felt like before I was operating in this, wrestling was just my entirety, you know what I mean? Versus just being adding to Sarah. And so kind of making that distinction uh, and having that freeness, like it really just made a shift in wrestling and, and as you say, in my life as well, and kind of pulled me out of that slump a little. It, it almost seems like you're describing like, um, I'm, I'm lacking the word here, but like a pivotal moment or a, a really important aha kind of whatever, right? Like that really impacted your life. It seems like it has. Can you look back yeah. and think of another moment you're on a walk or laying in bed or driving in the car, wherever, where you had a kind of something that sparked such a shift in the lane of, of your mindset? Yeah, you know, I feel like I have had a few moments in my life that feel very like, she's like, boom, like I've been hit with like a revelation or something, you know what I mean? Like, and that was certainly one of them. Like, I mean, I was on the walk and I just started crying. Like, I, I really felt a shift. Um, you know, and then again, there's just a moment and I've spoke about it before just after my elbow injury where yeah. I was like really hit with this like self-reflection of like, dude, what are you doing? <laughs> and let's make this change, you know? And, um, you know, I feel like after I came back from my elbow injury, I was a completely different wrestler and uh, in person, really. Uh, I just felt like I grew up a lot in that moment and, and there was multiple days throughout that recovery where I was like, it was very clear to me that I needed to shift what I was doing. Uh, and then not from much of a life perspective, but there was certainly one practice where like, <laughs> this is just a wrestling thing, but yeah. like where leg laces clicked for me. Like I remember the practice so distinctly and a uh, coach showing me this move that was kind of related to leg laces, but it like clicked parterre so much in my brain for me uh and that was really where i began to build on on a parterre and, and kind of focusing there so again i can just remember that moment so so distinctly um well it's funny you know you're like you talk about the elbow injury you're like i've become a different wrestler since then and i'm like she's a different wrestler since like a year and a half ago like <laughs> like like totally like i don't know i'm just really impressed and i was thinking about this too i'm like um She's a three-time world medal. She's on her fifth world team, and she's like, how many girls on the team are more credentialed? What? And Jaden was on the other day, and I was talking about how what a golden era we are in, in men's freestyle, and I feel like the same thing with women's freestyle. It's just like this three medals, titles over here, titles over here, medals over here. It's just like up and down the lineup. Yeah. It's pretty pretty remarkable, don't you think? Oh, it's incredible. I feel so grateful to be a part of it, and it's just um... – you know, I think of our men's team and our women's team and, and we're kind of an older bunch. We've been around, we've mm -hmm. been making teams for a lot now. And um, it's just cool. It's like, a, I feel very close to these people and, and what we're doing. And it's, it's cool that we have this expectation and belief that when we step on the world stage, we're walking off with world medals, world titles, like, um, like it's, you know, this is a very difficult thing to do. And, and we're all walking in with that kind of mentality. It's you only feed off of that. You know what I mean? Uh, it's really cool. It's also really cool to now start seeing the younger girls, you know, start calling their way into it and uh -huh. having these younger girls mixed in with our team. And I'm like, oh, shoot. Like you're starting to see like this is going to be the next generation coming up. It's it's an interesting dynamic and I'm excited about it. <laughs> all right. And I excitement think about the world championships um how excited are you and like what will it take to step up on one step level one step one <laughs> i am step. so excited i was uh we were wrestling at, on saturday and i was like 
holy cow, I'm so excited for world championships. I'm like, and they're like 80 days away, like reel it in a little, Sarah. But it really did hit me how, you know, it's so fun to compete. I, I just, at this point in my career, I don't compete often. So I miss it when I don't get to. And I'm like, gosh, I want to just want to compete. Um, but, you know, to the second part of your question, um, Yui Sasaki just made the team for Japan at 50 kilos. And she's arguably, you know, pound for pound, one of the best wrestlers in the world, <laughs> if not the best. Yeah. So uh, I have my work cut out for me, but it's certainly not in an intimidating way. It's, you know, again, and just an incredibly like, uh, wow, this is going to add so much to me and, and test me and make me better in so many different facets of my life. Um, to get to test myself against somebody like that and, and I believe I'm good enough to beat her. I, I truly, truly believe that. So it's not intimidating in that sense. Um, it's just, it's, it's almost like this curiosity of like, how, how can I improve in this space, you know, in these next 80 days and, and then get to actually put it on the line and test it. That's, that's a really cool opportunity. And I, I love that I get to step into that role. Do you, I mean, Susaki, are you like, is there, do you watch film? Talk with the coaches on strategy, general and or specific. Yeah, I definitely watch some film. My coaches uh, more heavily probably watch the film, but I like to be aware. Um, the way I kind of break things down is I kind of divide my weight class into tiers of, you know, like top tier, middle tier, and then mm -hmm. lower tier. And um, so, you know, obviously that top tier, I'm putting a little more time into with film and more strategizing, but I, I kind of go through everybody in a sense. Um, and I'll sprinkle them in through training sessions. With that said, I don't like to get too hyper fixated on people. I think I wrestle very much my best when I'm just my style, my go, you know. Uh, and I don't want to, I don't want to like clutter myself too much, you know what I mean? So uh, I'm definitely aware of things. Um, let my coaches handle a lot of the film for the most part, and, and we'll sprinkle stuff in through training, but. When it's go time and I step on the mat, I, I just want to step into, you know, Sarah. Sure. And I know you're like, she's, you know, easily arguable, arguably the, the number one pound for pound. From where I'm sitting, anytime you're on the mat, I'm like, Sarah got this. Like, it doesn't, go. you know, and it's easy, <laughs> right, for, for me to, but I, I mean, I, that's just the confidence that I really, I do have. I'm like, I don't care who they put Thank out there. You. Yeah. Yeah. So it's, um, it's it's awesome watching you wrestle, and, and it's an absolute joy from from this seat. So I know Kyle's over there. Kyle, Kyle, I think likes watching you wrestle. I never really asked him, but uh, he's also <laughs> got some questions for you. Like it's okay. <laughs> I have five questions for you. It's our game called Sweat It Out, hoping to make you sweat. Are you ready to play, Sarah? Yes, let's do it. All right, so. This is important for people to know. You're from Indiana, so name the NBA legend from French Lick, Indiana. Larry Bird? Yep. Got it. Really? She got it. Number two, ACDC has had three lead singers during its band's history. Name one of the three. <laughs> I know that there is Angus, but I don't know if he's a singer or a guitarist or drummer. I think he's the the guitarist. Yeah. Oh uh, shoot. Hold. Okay, can I give me one at least? I phone a friend. Okay. Yeah, phone a friend. I couldn't name any. <laughs> All right. They are uh, Dave Evans, Bon Scott, and Brian Johnson. So, where that well, question? Did no, you look up? Even close. Did you look up her like Facebook page and she liked ACDC no, or what? You you remember you did a Rudis <laughs> ad for ACDC AC line. Remember that? Oh. She talked about I, I like think your AC. dad your dad liked A C D C and you listened to it as a kid, right? Oh Are yeah, sure lots that's... of A C D C okay. we just never went over the band member name. <laughs> okay. All right. Number three, what is Wonder Woman's real name? Uh, Michelle Smith. <laughs> <laughs> I just, just came up with it. It's uh she Princess like Diana or Diana Princess. Oh, or Diana really? Prince. Yeah, yeah, Diana. Yep. That's a good name. She still looks like a Michelle to me. <laughs> she does a little bit. Uh, number four, true or false, a group of cats is called a clouder. 
false. That is actually true. Wow. Dang, Kyle's ruthless today. Dude, I am starting to sweat, not going to lie. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm outside. All right. Uh, Number five, we'll have five answers. There were five All-Americans from California on King's 2015 WCWA championship team. Name all five. In 2015? Yep, that was my senior year? That was your senior year. There were five All-Americans on that team from California. Name oh, all five. Oh, All-Americans. Shoot. Yeah. Oh, my God. You made me lose friends. <laughs> oh, my God. She's sweating. She's dripping. I can, I can see okay. it. Okay. Amanda Hendy. That's one. Is that one? Yep. <laughs> she's focused um, on japan right now all right i'll give you hints you want me to give you hints yeah give me a hint okay one you, you were a world team member with last year and she won a medal she won a medal oh forest forest molinari forest there's two Molinari's from yeah. california Yep. This has so many people from California. Um, right. Okay. The, another. The, the other two are there's two and they're sisters. Oh, the Doys. Yep. Ah. The Doys. That was a trick question. Okay, one more hint. Uh, so that's four. Uh, the last one, I don't know. I think she's the heaviest weight class. Jackie? Jackie Williams, yep. Yeah. We'll call it. We'll call it. We'll give it. Just a we'll little bit of help. A little help for yeah. my friends. I'm so sorry. You got it, though. <laughs> <laughs> to be fair, like everybody's from California. But then yeah, as soon as true. you said that, I could only think of the people not from California. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. Oh, man. Um, okay, one, one last I don't know if this is a question or um, what am I? I'm just gonna, I want to ask you something about Brad Harper. And I don't know oh, we've God. talked about it before, but he's like the craziest dude. Uh, do you know anybody who has more natural energy than Brad Harper? Absolutely not. <laughs> he is like just a bundle of energy and life. Like just this morning, he texts me and he's like, hey, like woke up all of these exclamation points. Hey, hope you have an absolute radical day. You're the best, exclamation point, exclamation point, exclamation point. I'm like, wow, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> I did absolutely nothing today, but wow, I appreciate this. This somebody, is very nice of you. Wish somebody would text me like that. <laughs> he yeah. is extreme in the best ways. That's awesome. That's awesome, man. Um, well, great, Sarah. I think that's gonna pretty much conclude, or that's what I had. Is there anything else you, you need to get off your chest? Gosh, not a lot, but thank you for having me on and listen to me blabber. I appreciate it. And, yeah. Uh, let's go. It's going to be a fun summer. I'm looking forward to it. Absolutely. Um, really cool hearing about that, that, that walk where you like had that moment where you, where you just kind of let go of every, you know, fear of losing. Yeah, it was call it result oriented. Yeah, so. it was, it's crazy. One of those yeah. moments you'll not, I won't forget. <laughs> Yeah. Well, thanks for sharing that with us, and, and thanks for spending a little bit of time with us, Sarah. Uh, best of luck in, in Tunisia, and then, of course, out at the World Championships. Go get that gold. But more Yee, importantly, enjoy the guys. moment. Yeah. <laughs> thank you guys so much. All right. Thanks. Have a great day. You too. Bye. See you. Bye-bye. All right, Kyle. Great show. Great guest. One more time. Crushed it. Yeah, Sarah's awesome. Yeah. Yeah, she's, she's just more. awesome. Great, great for wrestling. Just love her energy too. You talk about Brad Harper. She's got great energy too. So love it when she's on. Yep. So that's going to do it for today's show. For Kyle Klingman, I'm Mark Bader. Enjoy the summer solstice tonight because it's only getting shorter in the future. We'll see you.